I'm Raffaele Macchetti. I teach international relations at Lewis University in Rome. Um, I have just launched um, a MOOC, a massive online open courses uh, on international relations. Uh, this is online on an open platform. Everyone can register and enroll for free. The course has been launched a couple of weeks ago and it's still open. Um, and it's very interesting, not only because it's one of the first, if not the first, uh, MOOC on international relations proper uh, at the international level, but this is also very important because uh, it's an opportunity uh, for people from around the world, from different cultures, to get together, uh, not only to learn uh, sort of the major theories and the interpretation of international politics, but also to enter into a conversation. Mm -hmm. And this is particularly interesting because people from different sort of uh, um, also social backgrounds have for the first time an opportunity to sort of enter into a political debate with other people from other sort of social backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, political backgrounds. So in a way, it is, it is, it is very interesting. I mean, it is an exciting opportunity. There are thousands of uh, students from all ages, from, I mean, uh, teenagers under 18 or over 40, over 50, um, even retired people. I mean, all together sort of in a kind of global learning community uh, into a big conversation uh, on international politics. So I think this is very interesting. There is one limitation, which is a limitation that has to do with um, knowledge in general and with global politics um, in particular, is that uh, <clears throat> most of the knowledge that we have and most of the textbooks, for instance, in IR, are predominantly based on uh, Anglo-Saxon sort of uh, theories. If you go to look for important authors in IR, they invariably come from the US, sometimes UK, with very few exceptions. And not that in other countries there has not been sort of uh, theorization, but much less, and it's not translated in English, so it's not available to a global sort of audience, um, and anyway has been pretty marginalized. So, and this, MOOC, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling and I'm trying to sort of to bring in voices from the non-Western world, also European non-Anglo-Saxon world, also from Germany, France, Italy, but then also from uh, China, India, the Arab world, Latin America, and Africa, Russia, um, and I think this is particularly important, but it's a difficult task. Uh, it's very difficult to find uh, uh, articles in English written by non-Anglo-Saxon authors, videos in which you have these authors, intellectuals speaking about their theories. Um, so I'm trying to do this and I think this it will contribute even more to have a, a, re, a genuine global debate in which you have voices from different cultural contexts in. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a challenging task. So that's, um, that's I think the main, uh, um, uh, goal of the MOOC and uh, if I achieve this, I mean, I'll be happy, students for the moment are happy about this. Yes, or, yeah, I do get to hear about their sort of views because of course it's not only watching sort of clips or videos of five minutes, but it's also doing exercises, I mean responding to questions, but also uh, like commenting on text or on situation or case scenarios that I, that I ask them to do. So in a way, they, there is a kind of global dialogue because people write their comments online. It's like a blog. And so every student, I mean, a student write something, a comment, short or long, and then the next student will refer to the comments of the other students and will, will write his own sort of thoughts. So in a way, it's a dialogue ongoing on which, yes, I do a bit of act like a moderator, but really the dialogue is among themselves. And, uh, well, many surprising things. And um, uh, it's, it's also very humane. I mean, we were talking, I mean, there was a section about failing states and there were people from the failing states uh, telling us, the others, uh, how life is, how difficult life is in those countries. So 
there are really genuinely sort of um, emotional moments also in the courts, uh, which you would not expect. I mean, you say, oh, this is a kind of abstract po polit political sort of course, academic course, but then there is also a lot of humanism into that. Most of the students are young, so they tend to be uh, optimistic. They are good in reading many of the sort of wrong situations and the problems of the world. Uh, but I think uh, also thanks to these kind of exercises and um, this internet is an opportunity to open up dialogue. Huh? Think about 20 years ago, this was very difficult. I mean, for any student from Kabul, I have many students from Kabul in, enrolled in my talking with a, uh, a guy in Buenos Aires or in New York or in Beijing. But now this is possible. Okay, this will not probably change the world immediately, but the possibility itself of sort of talking each other, which is provided by technology, which was not a way available a few years ago, I think this does provide a ground for optimism. So I think, um, and you can see this, I mean, many students uh, are in a way open to take up the challenge of sort of developing more their understanding and also sort of trying to get closer to the other's interpretation. At the end of the day, uh, the, the ignorance of the other's point of view, it's a, it's a very serious problem in international affairs. So the moment you can talk with the others, you are already making a step forward. Uh, yes, it, it is sort of generating these kinds of effect. Uh, of course, uh, it is difficult, uh, especially in the moments of great sort of political, cultural, and sometimes military escalation. In those moments, I mean, societies tend to get even more polarized. And you can see these, um, of course, in the Middle East, but also in Europe itself. I mean, the situation between the EU and Russia. I mean, things are getting more and more sort of, uh, sort of uh, uh, polarized one against the other. And that's why you need even more in these cases uh, sort of dialogue to, to trying to sort of uh, reestablish channels of communications. I mean, I think this is a, a, a very negative uh, phenomenon that is going on nowadays, for instance, in Europe. Um, the channels of communication between sort of European countries and Russia are cut more and more. And of course, by doing this, you preclude the possibility of really understanding the other side. And so it's any sort of political solution, you move the political solution in the future. Well, the dialogue civilization and the forum itself um, contributed actively to the debate on globalization. In the last 20 or 30 years, the major socioeconomic phenomenon that changes our life and changes, changed political, I mean, global politics has been, of course, uh, globalization. And there you have seen in these years uh, those who have tried to advocate um, the continuation and the deepening of globalization, of a sort of global integration, and those on the opposite that have criticized this kind of supranational integration based on more localist or civilizational uh, alternatives. So in this debate, uh, the World Public Forum has provided an important sort of avenue uh, to sort of uh, generate an alternative debate. Hmm? This has been very important. And today we, we found ourselves in a situation in which the old cleavage right and left, it's not so important anymore. I mean, even in the debate in, within Europe, uh, the debate is very much between not left and right, but pro-integration and uh, against integration. You find parties that are in, supporting, in support of further European integration and parties that are against integration. Uh, arguing for sort of the, the, the going back to the local tradition, to the national tradition, to the civilizational tradition. The idea here is that there is no universal political project, universal principles, but rather political principles, human values, ethical sort of norms should be embedded within a specific cultural context. 
So there should not be any sort of universal rules, which is very often a kind of sort of ethnocentric um, imposition, uh, but rather each culture, each nation, each civilization should um, develop its own political project. Mm? So <clears throat> in this debate about globalization, the World Public Forum has provided important avenues because here uh, many different voices coming from different, uh, not only cultural backgrounds, but also political backgrounds, uh, have had the opportunity sort of to, to confront themselves and to sort of discuss and, and generate an alternative readings, which is more and more significant, I would say, um, in the context in which we live today. Thank you.